Welcome everyone. Welcome to Napa Valley Sessions, a quest for premier Napa Valley. This is the second night of a two night series in celebration of our premier Napa Valley release week. My name is Connor Best, the head of international marketing with Napa Valley Vintners. And we thank you so much for joining us tonight to learn about premier. Hey, tonight no, we explore the journey of how and why these premier Napa wines find their way into collector cellars around the world. If you haven't done so already, please visit our release week webpage at www.premiernapavalley.com to see where you can find these wines available for purchase. Without further ado, I turn the session over to our host, Alder Yaro, the creator and writer behind Vinography Wine Blog, who has a long history with Premier and is a great friend of Napa Valley. So Alder, over to you. Thank you, Connor. And if you haven't already started drinking, folks, I hope everybody has a glass in hand. Thank you for joining us this evening. It's really a lot of fun to be here talking about some of the rarest and most unique wines that are made in Napa each year. Um, and uh, Premier is kind of a special place in the heart of a lot of people who love Napa Valley wines. Uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful event every year and, uh, and a wonderful opportunity to see what Napa is really, really capable of. I'm joined this evening uh, by three panelists. Um, the first is uh, Gary Fish, um, who is our uh, retailer this evening. Um, Gary started a, a wine shop in New Jersey in 1987 and now runs four of them there, as well as a big flagship store in the Napa Valley, uh, opened recently. Um, and I'm also joined by uh, Katie Leonardini um, of the Leonardini family, uh, at, who own Whitehall Lane. She's the VP of operations there. Uh, the Leonardini family has owned uh, Whitehall Lane since uh, 1993. And uh, lastly, Aaron Pott, who is the consulting winemaker at St. Helena Winery. Uh, since 2010. Thank you all for joining me. Thanks, Alder. Thank yeah. you, Alder. So we get to talk about Premier Napa Valley wines. And I want to do just sort of like a quick overview for, for folks who might not be familiar with the nature of these wines. So every year, Napa Valley Vintners throws a, an auction to raise funds to support the organization. And at that auction, they auction off barrel lots, uh, wines in quantities of between... Um, uh, 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 20 bottles and uh, 240 bottles, five to 20 cases. Um, and these are wines that are made specifically for this event. And to the extent possible, these are absolutely one of a kind wines. Wines uh, made by each individual uh, winery that are unlike anything necessarily that they produce uh, normally throughout the year. Um, and these wines are auctioned off to primarily retailers and members of the trade like Gary. Um, who buy them, and sometimes they just keep them and drink them, and sometimes they turn around and, and sell them to their customers. And so we're going to talk a little bit about how that works tonight, um, and we're going to be specifically focusing on two wines. Um, the uh, first is the 2016 St. Helena auction lot um, uh, that Aaron made, and the 2014 Whitehall Lane uh, auction lot um, that uh, uh, winemaker Dean Sylvester made that, that Katie will be speaking about tonight. But before we get into the wines, I'd like to just talk with Gary a little bit about sort of how you approach Premier Napa Valley as a retailer. Um, why, do you, why do you buy these wines and who do you sell them to? Um, I have no idea. No, uh, you know, I, I was, we were joking. Uh, I've been coming to Premier for 24 years and uh, I did a little research. I know every year I buy a lot, my paddle keeps going up, but I can never remember how many wines I bought or whose wines I bought. But in the 24 years, we bought 337 different auction lots. Wow. Which is unbelievable. Um, and a reason why Aaron is on this uh, Zoom tasting, uh, Blackbird is tied uh, for second place in most auction lots I've purchased. Uh, so we've done Blackbird. There you go. <laughs> Uh, nice. We've done Blackbird six times. We've done Vineyard seven and eight, uh, seven or eight times, as he likes to say. Um, Schaefer five times, Spotswood six times. So, so we 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 buy across the board. You know, every year we buy new wine. So that to get to your question, I'm always there for a few reasons. One is, I literally taste as we talked about every wine that's being shown. So in a very short period, I taste the vintage. Yep. Uh, I, so I come away, even if I didn't buy one bottle, which has never happened, I come away really having an understanding of what Napa Valley 
is offering for that vintage. Whether I, I remember the 2003 vintage, which was very hot late, and the, the tannin and the grit from the wines. I remember the 14s, the perfuminess of, of the, uh, the youthfulness. Um, so we, we get to taste all these wines. We get to understand the ABAs, you know, uh, a couple vintages we didn't even realize until it was over. We bought seven wines from Stag's Leap Vintage, uh, Stag's Leap uh, ABA. So, so for us, the first part is to really understand and, and appreciate the quality of the vintage and the quality of the wines. We go usually with a budget and with consumers, guests in mind um, that have uh, given us money. Uh, and we treat it more like an investment portfolio as an individual stock. So we're not buying a stock for you. We're not buying a wine for you. We're buying Premier Napa Valley for you. Hmm. And when we get back, we divide up the wines and we um, give people, sell people, I use the word give, like I win the wine. You don't win a, a wine, you just spend 10,000 or 20,000 or 30,000 for an auction line. You buy those. So we buy a lot of great wines and then we sell them um, in two, three, six bottle increments to our guests. So it's it. kind of a fun thing to, to do. And what I also was thinking that the, the funny thing is, I rarely will taste the wines mm. after uh, they've been bottled, except if I'm at a friend's house for dinner and I convince them to break out some of their old p and wines um, <laughs> that you know they have. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of the, the basic idea of, the, of how we do it and, and what we do. Got um, it. It's, but in addition to in addition to the sort of the investment crew, the folks who send you there and say, "I here's my money, I'll get what I get in return," you also end up having wines that are available for sale to consumers, people who'd walk into one of your stores. Oh, ab absolutely. The the goal is always to overbuy, you know, and I and I say that tongue in cheek, wholeheartedly, um, because what I'm passionate about Premier Napa Valley wines, I think they're they are truly one of a kind. Uh, they're the best of the best of the best. And for people that, that buy a lot of great wines, I find to be able to show them these wines is something truly special. So we always have extra to introduce the next round of people, mm -hmm. right? Because if we just kept it the close-knit group and we sold out every year, I couldn't introduce the Premier Napa wines to new people. And mm -hmm. I need to constantly be bringing new people into the fold. Yeah. And when you go through and you taste wines, are you are you looking for something particular or are you just sort of seeing what's out there and getting inspired on what to buy each each year you go? I, I think it's a blend of both, to be honest with you. You know, as I said, if you think about the, the wineries that we've bought multiple times, you know, A, they're, they're now good friends, you know. Um, you know, uh, Whitehall Lane we bought five times. Um, you know, St. Helena Winery only once, um, but we bought Aaron, Aaron Potts wines eight times. So it's, it's a blend of finding, you know, new wines for sure. I always am on the lookout for somebody I've never heard of and looking for making sure when we come back, depending on the vintage, that we have wines from Hillside and we have Oakville and Rutherford and St. Helena that we're bringing back because they all taste different but, and they will age differently um, and they're made different. So the real goal is to have a wide range of wines available. Well, that's great, a great segue to what really does make these wines different. Katie, would you maybe talk a little bit for us about, you know, what, how, how a Premier Napa Valley wine uh, that you guys produce is different from what you normally produce and, and how you think about making the decision of, well, what are you going to do if you are going to do an auction lot for Premier? How do you decide what to make? Yeah, well, Whitehall Lane has been um, contributing to Premier, uh, the auction since 2010. Um, and it's a, it's a fun experience for us every year. First, we get together as a team with um, my father and I, my brother, Tom, who are the owners, um, our GM and our winemaker. And we say, okay, so what are we gonna do this year? We go back and we look at what we've done previous years. You know, what can we do that's different? What worked, what hasn't worked? Um, we come out with a plan. We come up with the name. 
uh, in 2014, we used Six Shooter. Um, and that was, that was a fun name because twofold, Six Shooter, um, my family, they're hunters. They're hunters, they're gun collectors. So there's that. Um, we decided with Six Shooter then to um, use our six Valley Floor um, Napa estate vineyards and take the best of the best from each of those vineyards. So once we determined that, um, we basically handed over to our winemaker and what Dean loved who, um, Dean Sylvester was our winemaker for 19 years and he retired on uh, early 2016. Um, so this is his, uh, we've, we have Jason Moulton, our winemaker who's been with us for four and a half years now, but we did it with Dean and we did it with, we do it with Jason. We hand it off to them. And the beauty of Premier Napa Valley is what, they get to make the best of the best. I mean, this lot that Gary bought is 10 cases, 120 bottles. We told him to make, make something creative and do the best he can. And, you know, in a way the pressure's on because once you're at the premier auction, all the vintners are there and they are for those two hours, three hours in the morning sampling each other's wines. It's very competitive and you don't want to come in with a mediocre wine. So we basically give gave Dean and we give Jason like the bandwidth to do what you want to do, do make the best you can because it has our name on it. So um, Dean came up with this. Um, it's primarily Cabernet Sauvignon. There's some Merlot and some Petit Verdot, um, but he picked from the best blocks in our six estate vineyards and, um, and he went with it. And then the day of premiere, we're proud to show it off and proud to have other vintners and winemakers taste what we came up with. So thankfully Gary liked it. And we're proud me, to buy it. Let me just show you, I, you know, while you were talking about it, I was thinking, and I, mean, I hope you can see it because you, it, there is a sense of pride and this is clear as can be on the label. It says, you know, Premier Napa Valley uh, auction 20, lot number eight. So that means I was giving up my money early for you. Uh, Whitehall Lane, 2014, six shooter. And then it's got the signature of the winemaker. Yeah, Jason actually finished that. There was a transition from Dean to Jason. Jason finished that and bottled it. And so well, they should have both had their signature. I'm just gonna say I was cheated. And then it says number 115 of 120. So there's no mistaking the, the rareness and the quality of this bottle. And you're right, the, the and I don't wanna use the word ego because that could sound negative, but the ego of the winemakers and the owners. Absolutely. And what sure happens that, with that is, well, you can say the ego, but they're proud, they want they want to present something the, um, the best they can. And it ends up being a win-win for the retailer and a win-win for the consumer. Um, when you're making just 10 cases, winemakers can make close to perfection. Um, and at the same time, they have, um, they can be creative. Mm -hmm. So it's, so it's really fun and it's not something that we sell. We don't have anything just like it. So it's really a win-win for Gary and for his, for, for, um, his buyers. Yeah. So, so just for consumers to know, like how, how different is, for instance, this specific wine that we're talking about, this six shooter from say your top of the line, uh, uh, Cabernet that you would make, uh, you know, the Leonardini uh, wine each year? Like what, what how, how yeah. different is so, it? So our top of the line um, Cabernets, we have vineyard specific Cabernets. We have our Leonardini vineyard. We make a very, we make a few hundred cases and we have our Millennium vineyard, 100% Cabernet, a few hundred cases. Um, but this is different because this is a combination of our six estate vineyards. Um, the closest we can come to it is the Leonardini estate elder that we sent to you. Um, but we, you know, we make a, roughly 4,000 cases of this. But when you're making 10 cases, you know, you are hand holding that um, from start to finish, um, you know, picking the best barrels. This was 100% new French oak. He picked the barrels for this. So when you're making 10 cases, you can come close to perfection. Um, yeah. so, so we don't have anything, this is as close as it gets, but yeah. it's 2,000 cases. 
and, and, and just saying, right. So, so Katie's saying she sent me that bottle. The reason she sent me that bottle is because there aren't any bottles, you know, of the auction lot, except sitting in, in Gary's store. So, um, right. you know, just to get a sense of how rare these wines are, right. Quite often the wineries themselves don't have any of these bottles. It, they only go to the, to the person who, who bought them. Occasionally there might be a, a couple bottles laying around that, that a winery might have and, and they, they cherish them. I've, I've heard. Um, so Gary, since you're the only one who actually has this wine in his glass, <laughs> tell us a little bit about uh, what, what you're tasting and smelling. Um, sure. And, and one of the things I want to point out is, is compared to the uh, Leonard Didi, the reserve that you have, what I'm finding here is um, there's a brambleberry, blueberry, blackberry current, you know, you get this rich mocha, um, the nose is just so expressive. Um, and you can't see it, but the color is, it's hard to tell on the, the color is just this dark, dark color. And it's chewy, but, and tannin, but not, it, it's a supple tannin, right? It's, it's great. I mean, you could tell it's going to age even much better than it is now. And to be honest, I, I Corbin, um, because I can't drink a whole bottle. I mean, I could, but there's two <laughs> bottles. And I'd have to share them with my son-in-law, you know, who would never leave if I give him uh, all the time. Um, but it's so, so it's got the, a full mouthfeel, a richness and elegance. And I, I did, I, I double checked and you have some fruit coming from uh, Rutherford, some St. Helena fruit, which now is near yep. and dear and a little um, uh, oak oh, no. right? Yes. Um, and, and, you know, I'm getting, you know, some dust, a little dustiness to it. Um, and just there's a, there's a, the mouth, it's just the flavors are still lingering in my mouth. So it's great, rich wine. Hmm. That's great. Aaron. And, and, wait, oh, before you get to Aaron. Yeah, go ahead. Um, per, pre me buying the, the auction, the first auction lot we bought, I didn't really know why. And I, I, to be truthful, it, to me, it was a drive by. You know, oh, it's a winery on the side of the road. There's a lot of great wineries. Um, and we went in, um, uh, your brother kind of pushed me a little bit uh, to say, you got to come visit us. And I, we visited and I was blown away at the quality of your wines. And then when we tasted the auction wine, I was like, you, you guys really have your act together. And now I'm like, you're under the rain as far as I'm concerned. Because it's a twenty a ten case lot, they they tend to be a little bit cheaper per bottle, and because you're a little bit under the radar, um, wine over delivers for sure. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Whitehall has always been a, a winery. I think that uh, you know, to use the phrase, punches above its weight. Uh, you know, in in terms of what you pay for the bottles and and, and the quality of, of what you guys produce. Absolutely. I, I have to I have to speak on behalf of Dean Sylvester, who uh, whom I work with at Newton Vineyard. I was uh, assistant winemaker at Newton Vineyard in 1990, and Dean was at Newton. And I, I had never met a guy with such a good palate up until that point. He has an incredible palate and he's so under the radar, it's unbelievable. I mean, zero ego at all. He helped me uh, so much. I learned so much from him. He's a really talented winemaker. And I think he was really responsible for putting Whitehall on the map when he came over there, he just, turn the place into uh, what the wonderful place it is now. And I think he really deserves a lot of that credit. He's a great, great winemaker. Yeah, he's a, and on top of that, he's a really good guy. Really yeah. Good guy. Yeah. For Excellent. Sure. Well, Thank so Aaron, you. let's talk about you. Tell us a little bit how you approach um, uh, Premier Lots. And in the case of, of St. Helena Winery in particular, how do you make the decision what to make and, and what goes into to, to the Premier Lot each year? Alder, my favorite thing about Premier is that you get rid of all of the marketing uh, losers uh, in, that are involved in any winery, and you just get to do whatever you want to do. And so all of a sudden, you get to push these people aside, and you get to make your own Premier Napa Valley lot, and nobody can jump in there and say, oh, no, oh, no, 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 you can't make uh, STEM inclusion Syrah oh, no, no, you can't make Morvedra, you know, you can make whatever you want. And so uh, we try to 
have the most fun with it we possibly can. And it's a uniquely, uh, uniquely vineyard and cellar. And it's, um, it's so great for that. We can be as creative as we want to be. So as a winemaker, do you sort of come up with the idea of it like before harvest or do you make all your wines and then afterwards sort of like deduce or derive what your premier lot is going to be? What kind of approach do you take? I think for for me, it's always in the back of my mind. It's uh, been a favorite event of mine in the on the Napa calendar forever and uh, it's always it's always felt uh, it's it's always felt to me historically part of the wine world. You know, it's so similar to the auctions that you see around the world in the wine world, and uh, and then it's it's such a vintners event as well. You know, it's only it's only this small group of people. Uh, it's rare that we all get into one room together. No, it's really rare. But uh, yeah, it's rare that you see all of your vintner friends in, in one room. And uh, you see the small guys to the big guys. So something that I, I think about all year round, and I, I'm always uh, thinking, uh, even when I'm tasting wines uh, for this current vintage, I'm thinking, well, you know, this might be an interesting candidate for Premier, um, just as the wines are coming out of the tank. So it's, it's always in my mind. I mean, even when we're walking around the vineyard before harvest, you know, you think, ah, oh, this might be an interesting twist on Premier Napa Valley. Mm -hmm. And so when you're making the wine, do you, I guess you, 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 you it's, uh, the wine is made through a blend or through a selection from what, the wine that you have in front of you. Do you approach the assembly of that wine or the selection or the making of that wine any different than you do the rest of, of your winemaking? I mean, certainly if, if we're going to do a blend, we, we definitely approach it differently. Uh, oftentimes, uh, the wines will be uh, barrel select, you know, because uh, there are five, 10 or 20 cases of wine. So we can select out of one barrel. And so we'll uh, find the lot we want to work with and then uh, select what's the most interesting barrel at the time for, for the premier lot. Got it. And once you've selected that, do you like chain it up in a corner and like put a padlock on it so nobody touches it? Like what, what kind of treatment does it get in the cellar? <laughs> it's pretty much that, you know, it gets uh, isolated. Uh, we make sure that we have plenty of uh, topping wine available for that, specifically for that lot. So it doesn't get altered by other lots. And uh, you, you need quite a lot of, you need about a case of uh, wine to taste uh, for Premier and for the events leading up to Premier, because it's essentially a week of uh, of parties. And then, of course, Gary needs his own like personal little tiny bottles for his posse. And um, <laughs> you no, know, you know, with Gary, you get spoiled. That's a good, good point, uh, Aaron. I want to can I, can I jump in? Do you mind, please? Yes. Uh, so uh, one of the things you asked is like, what, what am I looking for? And sometimes I almost go not to look for anything, but to see what happens. And for, I think three years in a row, I, I, I remember going to Charles Krug Winery for uh, the St. Helena uh, tasting and they have all the balloons. So every winery that's showing Premier Wines has balloons. So I'm not even looking at the, the the, what wine it is. I, I've got my, you know, people, my posse, people with me taking notes and stuff. And I go over and three years in a row, I go to the table and um, I smell the wine. I'm like, God, this smells so different. And th two years in a row, I said, who's the winemaker? <laughs> and she said, Aaron Pot. By the third year, I, I knew not to, I, I had remembered. Um, <laughs> but what I find on the St. Helena winery, is that the aromatics, they're more of that spiciness that you're getting. And the, the question I have is that, I read that you use uh, Bacchus cuttings uh, for the vines that, that you're using there. 
I mean, what's what's giving me all that spice and aromatics that that I don't always see in, in Napa? Well, I mean, I think one, it's uh, it's C clone, you know, S C E, uh, the clone that was isolated in Nathan Fay's vineyard, and it's kind of part of the Stag's Leap uh, wine cellars world. That uh, C clone. And then C clone was planted in the Bacchus vineyard. And we have uh, uh, our vineyard manager uh, at St. Helena Winery worked for Joseph Phelps uh, in the vineyard for years. And when he came over, he brought he over it. cuttings from Bacchus. He stole it from them. Yeah, well, you know, borrowed it. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and those were planted in a site, I mean, the all of the premier Napa Valley lots that we've produced come from block one. And uh, if you, you think about um, St. Helena Winery, it's uh, north of St. Helena on Pratt Avenue. And there used to be a creek that ran right through the center of it, York Creek. And so uh, they sort of moved the creek around the outside of the vineyard. But the section where the creek ran initially uh, is a huge bench, uh, gravelly bench. And it's uh, some of the deepest gravel I've ever seen in, uh, in vineyards in St. Helena. And it's stacked very high and very deep. And that's the section where the, where the wines come from. And it, it's, uh, uh, it's an older vine vineyard and the uh, vines are, uh, they're very low producers. I mean, their yield is tiny in there mm -hmm. and uh, the cluster size is tiny as well. I mean, I have C clone planted at my property on Mount Veter and the clusters in any given year are uh, about a third as big as the clusters at St. Helena Winery. Mm -hmm. And the berry size is tiny as well. It's just this very poor benchland soil that produces these wonderfully concentrated, wonderfully spicy wines. And I think C clone really has a, it's kind of one of these California heirloom clones, if we can call them that. Uh, that is not afraid to show that savory side of Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, I mean, we've all seen in Napa Valley what we can do with fruit in Cabernet Sauvignon. I think that's been played out. And uh, Cabernet Sauvignon is not innately a fruity variety. It's a variety that has a really beautiful balance between savory, uh, between spicy, between earthy characters and fruit. And, to see the full spectrum, I think you you need to you, you need to use a clone like C clone. Hmm. Tell us a little bit about this specific wine, the 2016 auction lot that uh, that you made for St. Helena Winery. Um, you said it comes from Block One, and that's yeah, it's common uh, Cabernet Sauvignon from from Block One. And does uh, it represent basically like? the best single barrel that you made of that particular block or or how did you how did you call it from from what you normally have so in the in the great vintages at saint helena winery we make a wine called the grand reserve which has uh this label which is what and i'm drinking because again there are no bottles of the auction lot for me to have yeah except, so I, Gary's uh, wine marketplace. except at gary's wine marketplace <laughs> which i Gary's couldn't get to in time for the event you need the addresses to go across the screen now. No, no, we have to be careful about that. <laughs> <laughs> it can't be too promotional. But so in, in any case, um, every, every year we make about 200 cases in the great vintages of uh, Grand Reserve, uh, sometimes only 100 cases. And we'll go through for the premier lot and just cherry pick the best barrel out of that lot. And I remember that the 16 is, uh, is a Bosuet barrel. And uh, he's kind of one of, my, uh, one of my pet coopers, as I'll say. Um, he, was, uh, he took over for a great cooper named Pierre Donajou uh, as the house cooper at Petrus, working for the Moex family, making barrels for all of their estates, uh, but working out of Petrus. And he stayed there for six years before he went out on his own to sell barrels. And the first place that he made a sale was to this uh, stupid American kid that was running Chateau Trollamondeau. 
And uh, I bought, just based on his story, I bought five barrels from him. And he looked so surprised that I said, is this your, is this the first time you sold any barrels? And he said, yes. <laughs> and so it started a, a great relationship and uh, we developed, um, we, first we started stocking wood at the Chateau that we used uh, to Cooper barrels uh, specifically for the Chateau. Uh, then we started doing a wood selection uh, specifically for the Chateau and stocking it at the Chateau. And then I started working with him on a, on a technique of uh, toasting that we started to use. And, uh, and now he makes a barrel that's uh, 36 month uh, uh, air dried and it's uh, wood that's uh, specifically chosen uh, from his yard by me. And it's called the Timeo. And so uh, we've been using that barrel uh, for many years. And that's this funny, I mean, this, uh, Katie, goes back to Dean, because uh, when Dean and I were at uh, Newton, we fell in love with these Darnajou barrels uh, very early on until uh, Robert Parker ruined that and uh, gave everybody like five extra points if they had their wines in Darnajou barrels. <laughs> and, uh, so uh, everybody discovered this guy, Pierre Darnajou, and uh, Jean-Louis Bossuet was one of, his, uh, one of his students and actually his sort of chosen successor. Katie, do you use a specific uh, barrel each year for, for the Premier Lot, you know, a favorite Cooper or, or does it change each year? Uh, our barrel program changed. Um, pretty dramatically when we, uh, when Dean retired and Jason Moulton came in about four and a half years ago. Um, as Aaron has attested to, Dean was an amazing uh, winemaker. Um, he was with us for 19 years um, and we trusted him to make our wines because we trusted in what he did. And now with Jason Moulton, um, who has made some big changes at the winery and positive changes as well. Um, you know, we, we leave it to him and we're really impressed by what he's doing. And so we don't, we're not committed to the same program with Premier every year. Um, and, and going forward, really trust Jason with what he has done. And Gary, I think you bought our 2016 lot as well, which Jason Moulton did from start to finish. Um, so maybe I will buy a bottle of that so we can we can go back and revisit yeah. that. It's um, funny, we, only have, we have less, we have, we have a couple cases of the 14 left and a okay. few bottles of the 16, which oh, is wow. the 14. But I, I have to tell you when we, every year now we use your winery uh, on Friday morning and we taste, I bring my group there at nine in the morning before everything gets started and we taste all the 10 case lots. And Jason sits with us and we're all taking notes and he usually goes last. So okay. you've got to know Jason over the last several years through that. Oh, he's first off, I, I would still proof him. I still think he can't be over 21. Uh, <laughs> I, th I think he had a momentous uh, birthday about uh, two weeks ago. He hit a new decade. Wow. He doesn't look it, but I believe he just hit 40. Wow. Um, he's an impressive guy, though. A really, really smart guy. Um, he's That's really into the science. He's been a great mentor for my son, who's 20, and studying viticulture and analogy. And um, Jason's been a great mentor to him. But he's also really personable, too. So I know you've gotten to know him. Yeah, no, fabulous. Can I? Oh. Gary, if you got something, I, uh, otherwise I, uh, we had a question come in from the audience and I want to encourage the audience to okay. put questions so in let's chat do that. or in the I, Q &A, I might be answering but, the question, but ask yeah. the question. Okay, so a question came in and, and, and either Aaron or, or Katie, you can answer. Um, somebody who doesn't quite understand how the quantities for Premier Napa Valley wines work. Okay. Um, Jerry asks, the lots are limited between 60 and 240 barrel uh, bottles, but that doesn't sound like it fills up an entire barrel does that mean there's like air in the barrel or how do you, what's the difference between the quantity that you're selling and the barrel size? So quickly be, behind the scenes, um, if you as a winery are a member of Napa Valley Vintners, which is a very strong organization that um, 
I don't know how many, how how many members they have, but the majority of wineries are members of Napa Valley Vintners because they promote and protect um, Napa Valley, Napa Valley winemaking region. Um, so if you are a winery in Napa Valley, you should be a member. They are, they are the loudest voice in protecting um, our region. So uh, Napa Valley Vintners has premier auction and they, all of the all of the funds that are raised through this auction go towards Napa Valley Vintners operating expenses, um, and what they do is protect our wineries and protect our region. Uh, when you submit an auction lot to Premier Napa Valley, you have a choice: um, a five, uh, it's either five cases, ten cases, or twenty cases. And because there are small wineries, you know, that make five hundred cases of wine. There are a handful of wineries that make over a couple hundred thousand cases of wine annually. So they want it to be, they want it to work for every winery depending on your size. So you can, um, you can submit a five case, 10 case or 20 case lot basically. Um, a 10 case lot seems to be a good fit for Whitehall Lane. Uh, we make uh, roughly 40,000 cases of wine annually. Um, so being able to come up with a, with a 10 case lot is a good fit for us. So that, those are basically our three options from a winery standpoint. Well, and so when you're making a 10 case lot, you're not just putting those 10 cases in a container, right? You're choosing 10 cases from an existing barrel that holds 25 cases, most likely. Aaron, you as the winemaker, can you explain that from a, from a winemaker's standpoint of how you do that with a barrel? Yeah, we, uh, so I mean, a case of wine is uh, 12, 750 mil bottles. That's nine liters. Uh, a barrel is uh, a Bordeaux barrel is 225 liters. So we have uh, 25, as Adler said, cases in there. Uh, when we go to bottle the wines for the Premier Napa Valley, we bottle those five cases out of that barrel and the rest of that barrel you blend. Uh, will go to another blend. You don't like secretly bottle it yourself and shove it in a closet? Oh, maybe. <laughs> Sometimes. Sometimes a few, but we can't put the Premier Napa Valley label on those wines. Right. Another uh, guest has asked, um, does the winery receive any of the proceeds from the auction lot directly? We do not. We do not receive anything. From that, 100% of the proceeds of the auction go towards Napa Valley Vintners and their operating expenses. And as I said, they promote and protect and enhance the Napa Valley and our winemaking region. Yeah. Another, and, oh, go ahead, Gary. Let me just jump in. As a retailer, we, because they are already marked up because we're bidding against other people, we put a very little markup on it. It's really, we look at this as a win win. Uh, that if we're helping the, the Napa Valley Vintners, um, we'll get a benefit by developing relationships like we have with Whitehall Lane and with St. Um, St. Helena Winery and Aaron Todd. And so, so we're not trying to mark it up. We just don't want to lose money on it. So we add a little fee, but that's very minimal. And when they're released, Gary, I know my brother, my brother Tom isn't here with us tonight. Um, he oversees our national sales and my brother Tom loves going to uh, promote uh, the auction lot with Gary to his retailers. And so then that's developing the relationship. That's a continuing the relationship. It's fun. Gary, here's a question for you. Um, Brent and Terry ask, uh, we're curious if each winery's uh, Premier Napa Valley production is sold to a single buyer or is the production split into smaller lots for auction? Uh, they're all except for one wine, one vintage um, into smaller lots. So we, we literally like I, I um, shared the build a portfolio. So if you say I'm in for a thousand dollars, we'll give you two bottles of this, one bottle of that, three bottles of this. The uh, I think the person is actually asking whether a winery makes uh, 10 cases and they sell those 10 cases to one person and then another 10 cases to somebody else. Oh, no, it's, it's, a, it's a, if it's a 20 case lot, mm -hmm. we buy all 20. If it's right. a five case, it's, it's a one, um, it's one lot, one yeah. person. It's one lot, one buyer, and 
never to be repeated again, right? So, you know, even right. as Aaron was saying, even if there might have been a whole barrel, 25 cases of the lot made, and the auction offering is 10 cases, 10 cases of that gets bottled and sold to a single buyer, and then no other of that wine is, is bottled and sold to anybody. And, it's, and, and I got to tell you, it's really cool because it gives you, especially if you like unique things, um, and I'm tasting, I'm still tasting the same in the winery, and I've had all of their wines recently. And the difference here is I'm getting a little bit more spice, a little bit more aromatics. Um, I'm getting a rounder, almost more chewy, a little bit bigger. Um, so it does not taste like their reserve. Um, you could tell it's from the same family, but it's definitely not the same bottle of wine. It's something special. Yeah, that's my experience too, tasting it at, at Premier Napa Valley. Um, uh, the, the wines are just, um, they're just a, a, a level above, um, you know, what, what the, the winery normally produces and sometimes quite different and distinct, you know, because somebody selects a specific grape variety to focus on, or maybe, you know, they have a traditional Bordeaux blend most of the time, but then they make one for a premier that's got a lot more Petit Verdot in it or, um, or something like that. The wines are, are really distinctive and, and, and quite extraordinary. I, I have a couple bullet points from some of the uh, questions I've seen that I'd like to, to bring up. One is, um, and it, it, I, a lot goes back to your first couple of questions, is how we buy wine, right? How are we deciding? And in one case, it's we're looking at the estates, right? Uh, Schaefer, Spotswood, you know, Round Pond, regular wineries that we're always focused on uh, trying to buy. The, the other one is winemaker. And, uh, you know, in this case, Aaron's a great example because we found St. Helena Winery because we follow Aaron. Mm -hmm. So we follow Aaron because we love Blackbird. So what we start doing is, you know, uh, Celia Welsh, uh, Philippe Melka, um, Aaron Pott are three winemakers that when we read the book in advance and it says who the winemaker is, if it says Aaron Pott, we're going to go taste that wine. Mm -hmm. The second thing is we're, we know spots would make great wine. We, you know, so we're going to make sure we, we stop by it and in many cases taste that wine three or four times just to make sure we know how good it is. Yes. And for those who might not know, so Aaron, you're a consulting winemaker, which means that you make wine for a number of different wineries throughout the valley in addition to your own, your own label. How many premier lots do you typically make each year? Oh God, it's been uh, as many as uh, six and uh, as few as two. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, somebody's asking uh, the question, do you have to be a member to receive notice of the auctions? And I think that may mean that you're not clear on, on quite how Premier Napa Valley works. So Premier Napa Valley is an auction that's made between the wineries, the Napa Valley Vintners Association and only retailers, so members of the trade. And then those retailers like Gary can then turn around and sell those wines to consumers, but consumers are not, are not invited to this auction. It's really an auction just for the trade. Can I jump in? I'm sorry. It's also restaurants, uh, country clubs. It's any license holder. Yes. Um, you know, the, an importer from Japan. Uh, so, but no, no consumers can be. Yes. Sorry, I'm sorry to put. No, not at all, not at all. Um, so we're sort of coming to the end of our time. Um, so does anybody have uh, any last minute questions from, uh, from our guests? Um, even though I didn't taste the Pyramir and Apple wines uh, this evening, uh, both of these are, are tasting beautifully. The, uh, the, the Grand Reserve from, from St. Helena 2014 and the, uh, the 2014 um, uh, Leonardini uh, estate wine. I'd like both to, beautiful. Can I share one quick uh, PNV story? Sure. Uh, which will speak to the quality, and I'll do it very quickly. Uh, early on in the game, um, we tasted, um, yes, these wines are in our stores. <laughs> uh, I got to sell. Uh, we tasted uh, the 2001 vintage, which was a great vintage. And we, we um, one of my top picks of that day was the Schaefer Hillside Select Sunspot Vineyard. So in his case, what he does every year is he takes from one specific vineyard that gets most sun, so they call it Sunspot Vineyard. Um, so right before the his uh, 
uh, Doug's wine came on auction, he was pacing. He was actually getting nervous. And he's a pretty confident guy. And I said, uh, Doug, if we buy your wine, will you do me a favor? And he's like, and he, he knows I'm from New Jersey. He didn't know me that well. So he said, Jersey connection, I'm going to be asking for something. He said, I don't, I don't do any deals. You know, this is your, you buy the wine, you don't buy the, no deals. I said, if I buy the wine, will you come to a dinner at my house in New Jersey? He said, oh, that I would do. So we bought the wine. We paid, I believe, $850 a bottle for the 2001 vintage. We sold it. Uh, there was a package. We sold six bottles per person. And for that, you got the wine plus dinner at our house. I brought a chef in. Uh, Doug came. Right before the dinner, the 2001 got 100 points from Robert Parker. Well, and if he had tasted the sunspot lot, he would have given it 105. Well, we we had I had one guest picking up the wine that night. The rest of the sunspot was already delivered to people's houses. So he asked if we're tasting the sunspot. I said, no, I sold it to you schmucks. I'm not I'm not going to eight hundred fifty dollars a bottle. I'm not going to give you that at a dinner you're not paying for. So I said, well, why don't we open up my sunspot vineyard? So one of the guests said to open up. We got the chef to for the glasses, so we wouldn't, we blind tasted Schaefer Hillside Select 100 point 2001 against the Sunspot Vineyard auction one. And I was watching Doug the entire time and I didn't know if he was more nervous or I was more nervous because I convinced these guys to pay 850 and Schaefer Hillside was like 150 at that point. And blind tasting, uh, every person in the room Pick the sunspot as being better. So the premier go. Napa Valley auction lot was better than a Robert Parker hundred point wine. I that sold you know I was sold before, but that sold all my guests, so that re reaffirmed my belief that these wines are above the best. Yeah, they they really are special. They really are unique, uh, and it's it's quite a treat to to both taste them or even just to to talk about them. So uh, I want to thank you all. Them? What's that? Can you tell us how to buy them? How to buy these wines? You got to go to retailers. Um, so the uh, um, Premier Napa Valley um, uh, release week is this week. And the uh, uh, Napa Valley Vintners has a web page that lists all the different uh, Premier lots that are available through, uh, for sale through retailers like Gary and others. Um, so just go to um, NapaValleyVintners.com. And uh, you should be able to find uh, the link there. We can probably, oh, look, somebody even put it in the chat. So there's a link right there in the chat. You don't even have to type anything into Google. You can just click into that chat and click on there and you can see all the, all the bottles available for sale. So we're sort of, I'm being told we've reached the end of our time. So uh, thank you everybody for joining us uh, this evening and for, uh, for sharing some wines and uh, uh, have a great evening.